The Wild Atlantic Way is a 1,600-mile coastal route that winds its way along Ireland's west coast, past beautiful villages, majestic castles, and a gorgeous countryside. It's a rugged and dramatic shoreline that can be calm and peaceful or windy and fierce, depending on Mother Nature's mood. To get my first taste of the Wild Atlantic Way, I explored the waters of Galway Bay by sea kayak. As expected, it only whet my appetite, and so today I'm heading further down the coast to explore more of one of the most spectacular coastlines in the world. Paddle Tales is produced with support from NRS, Aquabound, Wiley X, PH Sea Kayaks. Well, we're taking the morning off of paddling and we're exploring Ireland from a very different perspective from the road. This is the Wild Atlantic Way, it's a 1600 mile coastal route that you could explore this way by kayak, by hiking. Today we are driving our way down to Loop Head Lighthouse, one of the most beautiful points in this area and we're going to do a whole bunch of exploring along the way. I think the biggest question along the Wild Atlantic Way is where? to stop and go for a hike. There's so many spots, but a lot of people told us about this spot. This is the Bridges of Ross. And so, this is where we're starting. And what a start it is. Oh yeah. Wow. I tell you what. When you're around Big Swell, you feel so small. It's like you're in the land of giants. Well, we're at the end of the line. Loophead Lighthouse. You know, I'd, I had heard a lot about the west coast of Ireland and the wild Atlantic way and how beautiful the coastline was, but I mean, the whole way has been spectacular. <laughs> what a coast. Well, the surf is really pounding on the west coast of Ireland right now. And so even though part of me wants to go out there, we decided to have a chiller day. We've come to the Inchiquin Lock. This is where Patrick brings his groups when things are too rough along the coast. It's a freshwater lake, not that big, but lots to see. Oh. No one but geese on the lake today. Today we're here at Inchiquin Lake. Uh, we're right on the edge of the Boran National Park. Nice, flat, calm water. It's not a big lake. 365 acres of lake here. Uh, we've got an acre of lake for every day of the year. But it's a unique, special place. Where I grew up is only about seven miles or so from here. So I would have cycled here when I was a kid. I did have an old canoe that was hidden in the trees by the car park. And I would have come to this lake and paddled. And this is where I kind of got my first taste of canoeing and kayaking. Um, so the love from kayaking, the love for my kayaking pretty much came from, from Inchiquin Lake. It's 
Nice to see the leaves turning color. Or not. <laughs> well, autumn is my favorite time of the year for sure, but... It's pretty, um, but it marks the end of the season. Uh, it certainly does. <laughs> it certainly does. And then winter, I'm usually like looking forward to this time of the year, and then a couple of weeks later, I'm like, bring on the spring. Yeah. Bring yeah. it back. Lakes can sometimes be very one-dimensional. They can be beautiful places, but you know, uh, not too much diversity within the lake. But the cool thing about this lake is that it's got a variety of different little ecosystems. You have beautiful marshlands where the, uh, the swans were swimming around and really holding to. And then you have these islands that, and very different islands that, that you can explore, paddle around and explore a really cool uh, farmland, coastline. Um, and then you have a castle. <laughs> I mean, any lake that has a castle on it is a body of water worth exploring. So what's the name of this castle? Uh, this is Inchi Quinn Castle. Belong to the Quinn family. Oh, okay. Um, so the castle which is standing on the right is a 14th century. And then this big structure we can see on the left is the banquet hall that was added on in the 17th century. Wow, 14th and 17th 14, century. 14th and 17th century. Well, you paddle past a castle, of course you're gonna have to go explore inside. I suppose when this castle would have been abandoned in the 1820s, 1830s, like lots of castles around Ireland would have been abandoned back then. There would have been a law that would have come in where if you had a vacant or empty property on your land, you would have had to have paid tax on it. And one of the only ways of getting out of paying that tax would have been to remove the roof from, from the castle or from any property that you would have had on your land. So to avoid the tax, a lot of people then that would have owned the castles or moved out of the castles to smaller or newer modern homes would have taken the roofs off the castles. But once they were exposed to the elements, I mean, that was it. it would, everything just started to deteriorate on the inside and stairwells started to collapse and, and the ivy started to grow, things like this. So nature just took over. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at these vines. It's like they're holding the whole wall of the structure together. <laughs> we're gonna go just around the corner here, and then we're gonna start paddling up the River Fergus towards Kilnaboy. Beautiful, quiet little area. Nice meandering stream. If we're really lucky, we might get to see some kingfishers on the, on the river here. Look at this guy. You're very curious. Oh, hi. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> very curious, aren't you? Every time, I go on an adventure or a trip, instead of there, you know, it crossing one thing off the list and the list gets shorter, that's not what happens. The list gets longer as my eyes are opened up to other cool adventures that can be had and that's exactly what's happened here in Ireland. I mean, it's been an incredible trip and exploring the coastline, I just want to explore more coastline. But now that I've explored one of the freshwater lakes, I also have a ton of freshwater lakes to explore here. So. Great trip, but a lot more to do here. Well, I would love to keep paddling up this river and see where it takes us. 
but the sun is dropping and it's gonna start to get cooler so it's time for us to turn around head downstream end the day which is unfortunately my last paddling trip here in Ireland so I do have to send a big thanks to Patrick from North Clare Sea Kayak and for showing me his backyard quite literally his backyard this is the lake where he got his feet wet paddling for the first time and <sighs> what a trip but many more adventures to come so stay tuned make sure you subscribe to paddle tv if you haven't already and stay tuned for a lot more paddling adventures paddling tips and gear reviews <sighs> well at least i still have a guinness and fish and chips in my future